Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about the FBI's latest activity. The FBI have been on a tear, really working hard to take down not just the actual malware, but they've started to really go for the infrastructure behind it. Much like how everyone else relies on various software to do their work, so do cyber criminals. And one of these key tools is called avcheck.net. When I first heard about this, I didn't understand what was wrong with it. Because to explain the site simply, it's virus total for criminals. But you may be thinking, well, what's wrong with that? And secondly, why would anybody pay money to do this? So the main selling feature of this platform, avcheck.net, this is an archived page that explains what it was before the FBI took it down. Anonymous high-speed antivirus scan time checker. So, what you may not know about VirusTotal is, in addition to checking malware against antivirus, they submit every sample to their antivirus partners and anyone who is willing to pay their extortionate fee to access it. Uh, it costs, I think, around 20000 a year to get a VirusTotal Enterprise license, but most cybersecurity companies have this. So if a threat actor submits a piece of malware to VirusTotal, that is now going to make its way throughout the threat intelligence community pretty quickly. Now what about avcheck.net? They, they don't do that, and instead they make their money by charging you to test your malware. They also don't do this in partnership, so they're also probably breaking terms of service of antivirus companies. What they do instead is they install these antiviruses on a virtual machine and test it themselves. That's why you don't see anything super exotic, you don't see any of the enterprise options here, because those are much harder to come by and they'll usually check you out a bit more. Simultaneously, these two sites, uh, Crypto.biz and Crypto.guru, were also taken down. These are more easy to understand why. It is very obvious that this is not targeting legitimate users. You are on the registration page of Automatic Crypt Service. So what is crypting? Well, sometimes it's called crypting, sometimes it's called packing, and legitimate tools that do this are usually called software protectors. Crypting is the act of taking a binary, which with a disassembler is going to be relatively easy to go over and making it much less easy to statically analyze. This also screws up signature scans for antiviruses, at least until their crypt is detected. So these guys, I think it's actually run by the same people, have a check on AV check, so they use the second service in order to make sure that the crypt isn't detected, and they probably tweak it in a few ways if anything detects it. That's how they do it. And they charge $40 for this service, which is honestly extortionate given that the absolute best software protectors, excluding, say, DeNovo, like Thamida and VMProtect, VMProtect actually uh, recently upset a lot of researchers by uh, DMCAing malware analysts, so I wouldn't recommend their product, but Thamida is probably the best one, uh, and you can get a license to use this as much as you want for like $200. So then why don't, why doesn't everyone use this practically unbreakable system instead of using a much weaker system? I've unpacked this type of crypto in videos before, it takes about 20 minutes. Well, the reason is because the Midas technology, while great at preventing reverse engineering, leaves a very clear trace. Because of virtualization, it's going to be near impossible to get the actual code out, but detecting that it's using Thamida is effortless, and in fact it doesn't even try to hide it. That's why threat actors will use these, because every antivirus on the planet knows what Thamida is, and unless you've signed your binary and possibly paid antivirus vendors to double check it, you're not getting through. So that's the main reason why these kind of services exist. As a part of uh, Operation Endgame, which has been an internationally collaborative effort, in this case the US government went after these services, but the other services have also all been working together. And they, they describe crypting as the process of using software to make malware difficult for antivirus programs to detect. That is a good uh, differentiator from more legitimate software protection. They're not trying to make it hard, well, at least unreasonably hard, for researchers. They're trying to make it so that it won't initially be detected, and they'll also include anti-sandbox measures, which exist purely so that an automated sandbox might falsely classify a piece of malware to be harmless. DOJ made undercover purchases to analyze the services and confirm they were being used for cybercrime. Uh, Dutch officials 
said that it was one of the largest Czech antivirus, that's what CAV stands for, used by bad actors around the world. It's a high-speed antivirus scan time checker. Now, what I learned as well is, uh, in addition, and that's why they're calling it a scan time checker, there are also services that exist uh, called runtime checkers that actually work like a malware sandbox, but with antiviruses. It goes over some of the methods it has. Here's the Department of Justice release. Multinational op linked services to known ransomware groups. Of course, they bought these things to check out that they're real. Modern criminal threats require modern law enforcement so solutions. And that's kind of the thing we've been seeing in the last few weeks, is they're really broadening what they're going after to try and shut down more of these problem services. And they're also, they're working with private sector partners to increasingly, so that they can take down things that are hosted outside of U.S. jurisdiction to get rid of uh, more of these services. So I have this website where they have these anime-like shorts. I kind of like it. It's not the best animation, but... Oh, this one isn't even animated. They must have changed the style a bit, but... Is this AI generated? No, it probably isn't, but... Ransomware sanctioned... They always make them look as unattractive as they possibly can. I think this is AI generated. Hey, what do you need? Got the communications between them. This poor guy is really unhappy. Unfortunately, I can't read Russian, and but I can tell this guy is is really miserable. What will be? And I like how they have the what will be your next move. And they've got a list of some of the most wanted people involved. This is season two of Operation Endgame. Stay tuned. It sure will be exciting. Maybe not for everyone, though. Results can be found here. Others will come to you in unexpected and different ways. Think about your next move. This was when they shut down uh, a bunch of botnets. And they got Luma Steeler. And now they're going after the cryptos. And they also have a Russian language version of this website because they are clearly focusing a lot on Russian threat actors, many of which operate surprisingly in the open. And they do this because there's no extradition and relations between Western and uh, Russia are terrible. So they, they believe there isn't much risk as long as they don't target the homeland. I even saw this uh, video, I think it was posted by VX Underground, of a crypto stealing, like a crypto grabber service was giving out handbags at a live event. I almost want to go to that kind of event. That'd be fun. And everyone just couldn't believe it. But that that is happening. And that won't be happening, I don't think, for a lot longer. And what they're doing here is even when they can't arrest the suspects, uh, they can go after every infrastructure company they work with, and they can definitely make it difficult for them, and especially for their customers that may not be in such hard-to-reach jurisdictions. So that's going to be all for me for now. Another day, another disruption. It is good to see this. After years of pretty much nothing happening to the major threats, it is good to see increasing activity. It seems like law enforcement are finally doing stuff about the threats that are out there in the wild. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that some of these services, especially AV Check, uh, did have legitimate uses or were purely vessels of crime? That's all from me for now. Bye.